Of course. Uh, Hi, everyone. Oh, sorry. Whoa, we're a little early. We're just excited to see you guys. Okay, um, I realize we're a little early. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Take your time uh, if people want to shuffle into their seats. I know this uh, briefing is a bit later than normal, uh, but we wanted to make sure we had a special guest who could join us. And uh, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm is here for, I believe, her third visit to the briefing room with us. Second? Okay. Um, Today she's here to speak about the President's actions to make 50 million barrels of oil available from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to lower prices for the American people. Uh, we'll turn it over to her. She is a bit of a time hard out, so we'll, she'll take some questions and then uh, we'll send her on her way and we'll continue to do a briefing after that. I'll we'll turn it over. So much. Um, hello everybody. Happy Thanksgiving hello. to you all. Um, so let me just start by saying, um, I was, uh, I felt so honored to join the President's Cabinet because I know his uh, deep desire to make sure that we are doing everything in our power to reduce burdens for real people and uh, to give opportunity to American families. And top of mind, of course, as you have heard today, is making sure that every American has access to affordable energy, both at home and at the pump. And um, while our energy information agency, and that's underneath the DOE, it uh, predicts that we are going to turn the corner in 2022, the fact is right now that energy prices at the pump and at home are too high. This um, administration realizes that people are seeing this every single day as they go to work, as they fill their, their cars with gas, and we also recognize who's hurt the most from this low-income families already spend up to 30 percent of their monthly income on fuel, on, on energy. And so any price increase for them in particular um, causes an undue strain, but it causes a strain on everyone, obviously. So um, to be really clear, obviously, the president um, does not control the price of gasoline. No president does. Um, but what we're seeing right now is this global mismatch between supply and demand. Oil production is lagging behind as the rest of eco the economy roars back uh, to life after the shutdown. So we in this administration are leaving no stone unturned as we uh, examine the market to figure out what's behind uh, the high prices. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why the President sent a letter to the FTC uh, last week to ask them to investigate why there is such a huge price difference between the price of unfinished gasoline and then the average price at the pump. And he explained that a little bit in his remarks earlier, but if historical averages were true, Today, people would be paying about 30 cents less per gallon at the pump based upon the differential between unfinished gas and gasoline at the pump. So he's asked for the FTC to take a look at this. But this administration has been looking at every single tool that we can use to shield families from the rising costs of fuel. And um, you know that's why the LIHEAP funds were um, is a, a very important tool for low income uh, home energy uh, assistance. The American Rescue Plan has additional funds to be able to have help families pay their utility bills this winter. And of course, the president today, as uh, Jen just said, has announced that he's directing the Department of Energy to make up to 50 million barrels of oil from the nation's Strategic Petroleum Reserve, or SPR, available. Um, we've been having these conversations with uh, other major economies, as you've heard. And since that has been happening over the past few weeks, we have seen oil prices fall nearly 10 percent, which is, again, I think a testament to the President's leadership on looking for every tool possible to bring down the price. Uh, of course, uh, oil is traded on a global market, and uh, the more countries that can join us, the more the impact will be. Um, in response to the President's uh, announcement, clearly the Department of Energy is moving to make uh, two um, slugs of oil available. One is 32 million barrels from the SBR available through an exchange, 
and that means that oil that is taken out uh, today will eventually be replenished to the SBR with an additional premium, a premium of, um, of additional oil when that uh, amount is returned at a later date. And that's a tool that is very well suited to what we're experiencing right now, which is the high cost of gasoline and knowing that over the horizon, the projections are that the oil prices and therefore, hopefully, the gas prices fall. So bridging that time is what the SPR um, is, is being used for. And then um, that also means that we will be accelerating 18 million barrels of oil from the congressionally, from congressionally mandated sales that um, we are moving forward, 18 million barrels for that. So we're taking these um, steps, obviously, because we have to meet the immediate need of affordable energy and protect families from further pain at the pump. Oil prices have not been this high uh, in seven years. And uh, to be clear, the president is prepared to use every appropriate tool to ensure that Americans have access to affordable energy today. Some, um, you know, because low-income families and middle-class families and working-class people are suffering the most, he wants to make sure that he has got a robust array of tools and he's prepared to, um, to evaluate them and use them. But as we look ahead, the situation shows that we've got to stop relying on one source of energy, especially from volatile sources. So we have a short-term issue and we have a long-term issue. Um, relying upon um, volatile sources or relying upon fuel from countries that may not have our best interests at heart hurts the American people in the long and in the short uh, run. So it's why we're working faster than ever to diversify our energy, to add more clean energy. It's why the President's uh, vision of building out clean energy sources like solar and wind and hydropower and geothermal and advanced nuclear, that is the answer. That is the best strategy long term to protect American consumers from these energy price shocks. The bipartisan infrastructure law that was uh, just signed is going to expand uh, our infrastructure related to clean energy, the electric grid, so we can integrate more clean sources. It's also going to, uh, that bipartisan infrastructure law, as you know, is going to help build a nationwide electric vehicle ch charging network. It's going to help us build those electric vehicles right here at home with $7 billion for the battery supply chain. I was just in Chattanooga yesterday at a, a, a virtual, not a virtual, a ribbon cutting uh, for a factory that is producing a component of batteries for the electric vehicle, creating 300 jobs in Chattanooga. That's just one uh, tiny example of the whole ecosystem of the supply chain that will be created as a result of the bipartisan infrastructure law and then, of course, the Build Back Better agenda. Um, just one other thing, the bipartisan infrastructure law also invests $21 billion in demonstration projects for technologies like clean hydrogen and advanced nuclear that will put people to work in every pocket of the country. And then, of course, what's really going to help us escape this, um, this, these energy price shocks in the long haul is the second part of the President's agenda, which is the Build Back Better agenda. And because the clean energy tax credits in that agenda will help Americans save an estimated $9 billion per year in energy costs, It'll make electric vehicles and other clean technologies accessible to uh, every American. And um, historic investments in manufacturing and supply chains as well will put Americans to work making the technologies, not just batteries, but wind and solar and uh, the vehicles, uh, the whole array of clean energy solutions. So economists say that these bills together will ease inflationary pressures and grow the economy and create 1.5 million jobs every single year. So we're laser focused on ensuring all of these benefits are realized as we, as we uh, aim to achieve the biggest thing that America has ever done to address the climate crisis. Our administration is deeply committed to tackling this existential threat by transitioning to clean energy while at the same time making sure that every American has access to affordable energy. So thank you so much. Happy to
take your questions. Okay, let me just say, I think it would be helpful if you guys go sit in some of the seats that are open, um, if, if you don't mind, since there's some open seats, it would be great. Okay, um, Josh, why don't you kick us off? Secretary Granholm, thanks so much for doing this. EIA says domestically we're producing about 11 million barrels of oil a day on average. That's down from 12 million in 2019 pre-pandemic. Why hasn't domestic production returned in a way that would lower prices? Yeah, this is a great question, a really great question. We have 250 fewer oil rigs that are functioning today than we did before the pandemic. And yet, the oil and gas industry has leases on 23 million acres of public lands on and offshore. Over 9,500 permits have been issued that are not being used. At the same time, the energy uh, industry is making enormous profits. Um, they're back up to w above where they were before the pandemic started. So they have um, taken advantage of that moment, the profits, to be able to engage in shareholder buybacks, for example. But we want to encourage them to increase supply. We want supply to be increased both inside the United States and around the world so that we can reduce the pressures at the pump. So, so just Jeff, you're saying that U.S. companies have not necessarily returned <coughs> have not, to production. Have not returned to production. They have not. In fact, there are 150,000 fewer workers uh, in oil and gas today. There are it was over uh, 200,000 people who were working in the industry before the pandemic. They have not rehired people. They have not turned on the rigs. They have not taken advantage of the permits that they have on the land that they have. April. Uh, yes, um, Madam Secretary, as you talk about supply and demand, and as that was part of the issue for this spike in gasoline prices and energy prices, COVID is here, COVID is part of the bargain, and you just kind of talked about that pre-pandemic versus what's happening in pandemic. COVID is expected to stay. How do you marry the distance between what's happening now with U.S. production, COVID, and trying not to, to try to keep prices down as prices are going. Yeah, April, it's a great question. This is why what today's action was so important. We recognize, obviously, that there will continue to be spikes. However, this administration has been very aggressive, obviously, about getting people vaccinated, and that's the ultimate answer. But as we know, uh, and as the Energy Information Agency has projected, the price of gasoline will come down what they project to be below three dollars uh, a gallon in 2022 early 2022 and continue to ratchet down bit by bit um, what we want to do with today's action is to bridge the gap between the high prices today try to reduce it as much as we can within our power by increasing the supply that we have access to as we move through and the market then corrects itself and hopefully increases supply from the private sector. And a follow-up, um, you said your effort is uh, primarily targeting working and low-income families. What do you say to those families who are feeling the pinch right now at the pump? Prices are very high. Yeah, no, no doubt. This is why the president has been really thoughtful <coughs> about this. I mean, this is, you know, we've looked at every angle of what the tools are to him. He feels so strongly that all Americans are feeling the pinch as a result of gasoline at the pumps and short term we have to do everything in our power and that's why we have the strategic petroleum reserve but he also feels very strongly that long term the strategy really is to go clean I mean right now the price for example uh, of solar and wind is cheaper than in most places in the country because it's free fuel than, um, than more traditional sources of energy so he wants to bridge that time and, in, and in double down on investing in clean while creating jobs, but do what we can within our power to lower the cost today. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for doing this. Um, there are various figures about this, so I'm curious if you know, how many barrels of oil does the U.S. consume per day? I don't have that number in front of me, sorry. So some suggest it's about 18 million, which would suggest you're releasing less than three days' worth of supply from the petroleum reserve. Why is that enough? Well, we, what we are doing, plus what other countries may be doing, which will be less than what we're doing, because we have the largest um, amount of strategic petrol of petroleum reserves, 
we believe will be this bridge. I mean, the Energy Information Agency has said, for example, that in December, the, um, this is what they have projected. Now, again, it's probably more of an art than a science. Projecting is um, subject to a lot of different um, volatility, but that in December, the price will be uh, $3.19 a gallon, and then in January, continue to go down. So this is really a question about a short-term strategy that allows us to make this bridge. So it's not we're going to not supply all of the oil for three days, obviously. We, want it, we will be releasing it over a period of time, and uh, we will uh, have a certain amount that uh, each particular cavern is releasing. But we're not saying that we're going to be supplying all oil for the country. Uh, we're just going to try to do what we can to temper. And it's coming over several weeks, then, you said? Mm -hmm. It will be. It's, well, first of all, we are not going to release it all at once. It will be thoughtfully done uh, over the next bit of time. Um, and it will be dependent on those who bid. So that takes a little bit of time to do. But listening to you just now, it sounds yes. like you're saying the price is going to hit a certain amount in December and then down into January. Yeah, it'll it will be over mark. a few weeks. It will be over. So uh, we're looking at a Increased prices continuing through the Christmas season. Well, we're hopeful that this will, because it's increasing supply and it's the largest effort ever, we are hopeful that there will be a lid. Although some of this, honestly, has there has been movement um, on oil, the price of uh, per barrel has dropped about 10% since this conversation started and was out there. So we're hopeful that um, prices will be stabilized and start to move down. We are not saying that there is going to be some dramatic um, difference, but we also are recognizing and Everybody needs to, I think, be a partner in letting people know that last year was an anomaly because demand during COVID for gasoline was so low that the prices were so low. And when demand is high, the price goes up and demand now has exceeded supply and we are doing our part to make sure that we can alleviate as much of that pain as possible. Rachel. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Madam Secretary. So bottom line, how soon will Americans see prices at the pump drop and how long do you expect that to last? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not going to make a prediction about how much and how long. Um, I'm, what I'm saying is that these, this is the largest amount that we've ever done and it won't happen tomorrow, but it'll happen over the next few weeks that people hopefully will start to see the difference. Before the end of the year, before the Christmas holiday? I think that people will start to see some uh, tick down uh, over the next bit, but again, we want to make sure that the gas prices at the pump are not being held artificially high for some reason. So as I mentioned, it is unusual that the price of gas at the pump doesn't drop with the same, at the same rate as the price of unfinished gas. And they, people would be paying 30 cents less per gallon if that had done that. So this is why the president sending the letter to the FTC Some was important. It a short-term fix, simply putting a Band-Aid on top of a longer-term issue. So should Americans be bracing for prices to go down just for maybe a couple of days or a couple of weeks and then go right back up again? Yeah, again, it's hard to uh, predict what gasoline is going to do because it is a global market, but we are doing what we can right now because this is a bridge to a longer-term issue. It's a short-term pinch. We want to make sure we do it, what we can to sort of um, even out the market while, while these prices come down. Um, and in the long term, of course, the long term solution is to build clean. And that's what we're doing. Let's try to do like one so that we can get more people out. Okay, I'll just link them together. Um, is this, would you say this is like a one off or will this become policy for the US to rebalance the market in this way whenever OPEC starts to keep supply tight? Yeah, I mean, this is an unusual situation because we're coming out of a once-in-a-century pandemic. And so we have a, a very unusual mismatch between supply and demand. Um, I do know that the president has got a lot of tools that he is looking at, um, and those tools remain on the table. But this is an unusual situation. And one thing he mentioned, I'm sorry, in his speech was that China may do more as well. And I wondered if you could illuminate a, a little bit what he might be. Yeah. I, I mean, China will make its own announcement, but I think the, the point is that the president has been re doing everything he can to affect the global market as well by reaching out to allies who have, I mean, not everybody has a strategic petroleum reserve, and nobody's is as large as the United States. So. 
Uh, you uh, you addressed this in your comments, but I want to directly ask about it. Uh, are you concerned at all that the short-term message here for the short-term problem of please drill more oil uh, undermines the administration with its long-term goal, which which everyone talks about as a key goal of completely transitioning the country toward clean energy? I mean, well, it's two very different messages. It is. Well, I mean, the message is that this, we are in a transition. And the transition does not happen overnight. And we recognize we're not going to flip a switch and be completely um, all clean because we haven't done the, the investment necessary. The president just signed the bill. So this is a short-term strategy to be, make sure that people are not hurting. And the long-term strategy to make sure that the country doesn't hurt into the future is to build clean. Uh, the last one. You just mentioned, Secretary, Madam Secretary, that the administration is still considering some other tools at its disposal. We saw the main one today. What are the other ones actively being considered and under what timeline? Yeah, I'm, I'll just say this, that the president has got a few options, and he um, will be the one to announce. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, and happy Thanksgiving again Thank to everybody. <laughs> All right. Bye.